This is you, and this is your AI drone. You're not holding a GoPro, and you don't have a drone controller either. Instead, you're just having fun because this AI drone is shooting a video for you automatically in 4K 120fps slow motion, or 8K 30fps, or 10-bit HLG up to 4K 60fps. I know that sounds hard to believe, but I got to try the Hover Air X1 Pro Max for almost a whole day and I came away very impressed. But I also had some questions. Here's what you need to know about the Hover Air X1 Pro Max and Pro before pre-ordering it. So we're going to talk about video quality, flight performance, convenience, real world testing, and even real world problems. Now, can I share a secret with you? Like, you know this channel is about shooting fast and fun things. But when I'm out having fun, I'd actually rather not shoot video. Because when I'm having fun, I want to focus on having fun. I don't want to have to put a camera on a tripod and then frame myself and then move the tripod and then reposition it and then get another shot from a different angle. I mean, all that makes the video look good, but uh, it may distracts from having fun. And that's why I loved the Hover Air X1 from last year. Because with the Hover Air X1, all I had to do was press the button and then it would just launch itself automatically and shoot a video. And I wouldn't have to think about it. I could just focus on having fun. And then when I'm done, all I have to do is stretch out my hand and it comes back. It was super convenient. Now all that was great, but it did have some limitations. Like you can see from the video quality, it's not terrible, but it's not great either. Then there was the flight performance. If I rode at anything above, say, jogging speed, man, it couldn't keep up. And then it had other limitations, like it didn't have obstacle avoidance, and it couldn't fly over water or snow or uh, over tall cliffs. All that is why I was so excited when they announced the Pro Max and the Pro because the X1 Pro Max and Pro address all these issues and more. The specs have been out for a few days now so you probably have heard about them and most of them are self-explanatory. But I want to focus on those features and specs that you might not totally fully appreciate. So let's talk about those. First, video quality. Now, you know the Pro Max shoots at 8K 30fps, but I don't have an 8K display and most people don't. So what's the point of shooting in 8K? Well, a couple of things. First of all, if you shoot in 8K and then you downscale it to 4K, then it's kind of like super sampling and it's gonna be a little bit more detailed than shooting in native 4K. Secondly, if you shoot in 8K, then you can zoom in at up to 2x zoom and still get full 4K resolution. Now that is really handy for a drone like the Pro Max or Pro because they use wide angle lens, uh, lenses like the equivalent I think is 16mm or something like that. So if you're a little bit far from the subject, then the subject's going to appear a little small. But if you shot in 8K, then you can crop in the 2x zoom like as if you're shooting with double the focal length, like around 32 mil or so, and you'll get a tighter framing while still getting full 4K resolution. Now the other thing I was excited about was 10-bit HLG video. Now if you're not familiar with that, it's kind of like shooting in the iPhone's HDR video mode like with Dolby Vision or on high-end Android phones that have HDR10. So if you're watching a video shot in 10-bit HLG, then the lights look more luminous, like almost too bright. So they look much more realistic. Now another feature I was excited about is a new flying mode called Ski Mode. So this is kind of like Orbit, but you can keep moving and 
the Pro Max and Pro will keep orbiting around you. So this is gonna make your videos look a lot more interesting. Next, let's talk about flight performance. Now, the Pro Max and Pro both have a new feature called Omni Terrain. So this means that you can now fly over water and over snow and over cliffs and it's not gonna freak out. They said you could do it even at a, over a boat. We'll see. I also like that it has a new rear and side collision detection. So behind the drones, there's a time of flight sensor, like it shoots a little infrared or laser beam uh, to, to detect distances. And the, in addition, the Pro Max has a camera there that can actually see behind it to help avoid obstacles. Now let's talk about usability. The biggest update is the beacon. So this is an accessory that has many uses. Now, first of all, just as the name implies, it's a beacon. So let's say if you're in a crowd and you're all wearing kind of similar clothes, then computer vision will have a hard time picking you out of that crowd. But if you have the beacon, then the Pro Max and Pro can continue to track you. So that's really cool. Now, another feature of the beacon is that it acts like a live view remote. So picture this, let's say you're, you're riding on your bike and then the Pro Max or Pro is following you and you're not sure if it's still following you because it's a little bit far away. Well, if you have the beacon, you can look at the screen and you can see instantly if you're still in the frame. And finally, the beacon is also a wireless mic. Now, if you didn't know, the Hover Air X1 is great for vlogging because you can record yourself through your phone. The voice will be clear on your phone and it's even good to remove the noise of the props automatically. It's really amazing. Now, the beacon takes that one step further because instead of having to use your phone and hold it, instead, you can just use the beacon and just clip out your shirt or hold it and it can act like a wireless mic, no matter how far away your drone is. And with, with all the features of the Beacon, the cool thing is it's priced very reasonably, at least in my opinion. It's gonna be 129. Now, I mean, considering that if you get like a Rode wireless mic, that a Rode wireless mic by itself, it's all, all, already over that price. So you get the wireless mic plus the live view remote and the tracking capabilities all in one device for a really low price. Another new cool feature is the HEM cage. Now, first let me back up. Like one of the things I like about the Hover Air X1 is how durable it is. Like I have had mine like bump into trees or even a metal post and it's still fine. Now, a lot of that has to do with its cage to protect the props. I am still in my first set of props. Now the Pro Max and Pro take that one step further with a cage made of this new material. They call it HEM, I think it's high elasticity material. So they've been developing it for two years and get this, it's lighter than carbon fiber, but still elastic, but almost indestructible. Like they have this demo where the founder is trying to like rip it and he couldn't. So. This is gonna make the Pro Max and Pro even more durable. So all of this is really cool on paper, but how is it in the real world? So like I said, I got the chance to test it in various situations like indoors and indoors it had no problems at all. I was shooting in a, in a room where there were several other people and the Pro Max never once bumped into anyone. So it shows how safe and how good the tracking is. Uh, it, I also tested it indoors with rear obstacle avoidance. I did the zoom away motion and it flew backwards and it didn't hit the wall. It detected it. Um, and then outside, we uh, tested it with a, a subject who was running like really full speed and even up and down the stairs. And this is really cool. But um, Mike Mansell from Manshed, he ran through this bridge where there were like birds there. And so as he ran through it, the birds scattered into the air. And yet, 
the Hover Air X1 Pro Max was able to keep track of him the whole time, never flinched. Now, I've also tried harder subjects like thin metal poles, like I ran past them and the Pro Max didn't hit them. I've also tried running near low hanging branches that were kind of thin and the Pro Max was able to evade them as well. Now, we got to try a lot of things, but there were some things we didn't get to try. Like, first of all, we only got to try the Pro Max. We never got to try shooting with the Pro. Now, having said that, they did provide samples from the Pro. I'm just saying that I haven't gotten to test it, the Pro itself. Uh, we also didn't get to try Dolly Track Mode. Now, Dolly Track Mode is the mode that I use most often. And so I, I was a little bit disappointed we didn't get to try it. They said they're still working on it. So I'm assuming that it's going to perform at least as well as the X1, but hopefully even better because of the better processor and better camera. Uh, I also didn't get to try the beacon. So I don't know how accurate the tracking is. Like can it really track a subject in a crowd? And we didn't get to tr test Omni Terrain. Um, and we haven't tested low light, so I don't know it's low light performance. They say it's better and they say it should be able to track you even in low light, but I haven't gotten to test that. But should you pre-order the Hover Air X1 Pro Max? Now, first of all, I would suggest thinking about why you might want this drone. Like if you're thinking about shooting like amazing landscapes or scenery, then I would actually not recommend um, the, the Pro Max. Instead, I would recommend a larger drone for that, like let's say a Mavic 3 Pro or something like that. That would be more capable for that purpose. Also, if you're trying to buy a drone because you wanna fly a drone, like you think you're gonna have fun doing it, then um, I wouldn't recommend this either because this is uh, not designed for that. I would instead recommend getting uh, something like an FPV drone, perhaps a DJ Avada or something like that. Now, if on the other hand, you want more of like a cameraman to shoot a video of you while you're uh, having fun or you're vlogging, then this is a very good camera for you. So it's not only very convenient to use, it's also gonna make your videos a lot more interesting. It's gonna in increase the uh, production value and will make it really look like you have a cameraman. Now, can it replace your GoPro? Uh, in some situations, yes, but there are many situations where you won't be able to fly a drone. Like for example, if you're in a super crowded area, it wouldn't be safe to fly a drone. Um, or let's say you're in a library or at the museum. So because of those limitations, then it can't totally replace your GoPro. But if you're, let's say, skiing or snowboarding or skateboarding, anything outdoorsy like that, this would be a great camera, uh, probably a better camera than a GoPro. Now, should you pre-order with the crowdfunding campaign? Um, first, let me tell you, uh, with the first 48 hours of this campaign, there's going to be a special $100 discount. And they said that they're never ever going to offer it at that low of a price ever, not even during Black Friday. So that's a special opportunity that you can get. Uh, second, you might be worried that about crowdfunding. Like there are some crowdfunding projects that never fund and they never deliver. And the backers are usually just left holding a bag. Um, but with this campaign, for the first time, they're gonna offer a guarantee, like Indiegogo itself is also backing this guarantee, guarantee that they said that if they don't ship it uh, in time, according to the projection, the projected timeline, then you're gonna get your money back. So there's lots of assurance, but still there's no review of the Pro Max or Pro out there because they haven't sent the review units. So you might be wondering, should you pre-order? Well, so here's my analysis. Um, for video quality, um, we, they have provided samples that they said were shot with the Pro Max and Pro. So 
uh, assuming they're telling the truth, then those, those video samples speak for themselves. So you can evaluate if the quality is good enough for you. Now, as for flight performance um, and convenience features, well, here's what I'll say. Like, uh, I've been using the Hover Air X1 for the past year, and they've been really good at pushing out updates for it regularly. And so far, they've pretty much done everything that they've said about the that they would do about the Hover Air X1. So I'm reasonably confident that whatever they've promised for the uh, Pro Max and Pro in terms of convenience features or flight performance, they should be able to back them up. But if you want to, you can also wait for the review. So meanwhile, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in 360.